uh, as much as I see uh, Nural Islam Bashari, uh, my friend, sent uh, five paper with uh, with his uh, colleagues. Uh, in this session, we have uh, five uh, presentations. Uh, first, uh, the numbers were uh, the numbers uh, for presentations. Uh, 29, 65, 78, uh, 126, 141. Uh, are there here uh, to uh, to make a presentation? Uh, for uh, first pr uh, presentation, uh, who is the presenter? Uh, Nurul Eslam Bashari. Are you here, my friend? Uh, oh, um, Mister, just, um, just. Um, uh, so uh, I'm. You will, you will be. Uh, you will be present, right? Al, al, uh, al Lamina. Lamina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Bashari uh, will not be able to be with us today. So, okay. Um, okay. and after requesting permission from the organizers, I'm going to launch her previously registered participation in this event. So uh, I will launch this um, uh, for uh, uh, the second, I guess, the second presentation. Oh, OK, uh, for uh, for first pr presentation, uh, you are uh, or another. Uh, no, an another one, another one, another one. OK, yeah. uh, Adel uh, Kachimi, Abdurrahman Buda, Bilal Bensari. Uh, are, uh, is there anyone uh, here for uh, the presentation title modeling the risk of introducing non-native spices uh, so on uh, okay uh, we can uh, make the change the uh, list uh, we can uh, start with the uh, second presentation uh, for the title, Statistical Modeling of Wine Speed Along the Algerian uh, Sorry for that. Algerian Coast Application Effect of Wind of Fishing. Okay, uh, Lamia, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, so I will launch uh, the, uh, the participation of uh, Professor Bashari Nur Islam. Enjoy your listening, and I will be back with you after this presentation to present my own. Okay. Uh, when, when you're ready, please start your yeah. file. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, just tell me, please, if the slides are displayed uh, correctly. Uh, I'm checking. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so please, please enlarge the uh, yeah. presentation. You know. Uh -huh. Okay, that's good. We are listening. Okay. Um, are there any problem with your voice? Sorry, sir, there are a problem. Uh, no, no, uh, the, the, uh, there isn't uh, any voice. Oh, you, uh, uh, when you uh, I will try, I will try to, launch, to launch this and, and not another. OK.
Alo. Is the sound okay? Lamia, you can start, please. Yeah, is is the sound was okay? Was uh, okay. Uh, the, the problem when you uh, start the uh, presentation, your uh, voice is uh, go, uh, going. Right now you can uh, speak and we are uh, listening, understand. Then when you uh, start your presentation, there is no voice. Ah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. I will try to, to fix ah. this. Yes, yes, please. Uh -huh. Emre Sadıkoğlu. Efendim hocam. Ee, ha şimdi gelecek gibi ses hadi bakalım. Şu an slide gözüküyor. Ses gelecek gibi bakalım da. Problem ne olabilir? Okey. Kapatıyor herhalde. Hocam tam ekran yapmadan bir denese. Öyle mi yapalım? Deneyelim. Lamia. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, please uh, don't enlarge the presentation and uh, speak, please. Um. Uh, try, tr try to this and uh, start, inshallah. Okay. By the way, Mr. Bashari recorded his voice during the presentation. Uh, so don't you listen to his voice? Uh, we we we we haven't uh, heard uh, the any voice. Ah, okay. okay. Because it's not me who will uh, present. So ah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Bashari uh, recorded his voice during the presentation. So uh, I don't know. I I, I can't. Uh, I can't fix the problem. I'm sorry. I uh -huh, I uh -huh. try by but. Uh, If you have a uh, uh, knowledge for this presentation, you can uh, read. Ah, uh, sorry, I don't have any knowledge about oh, this. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lamia, uh, uh, in this time yeah. we can uh, change uh, the another uh, uh, presentation uh, with your uh, Nural Islam Bashari Ali Lamia. Uh, uh -huh. You can uh, present the small uh, pelagic fish, right? Okay, yeah. Please uh, change, uh, by the way. Okay, okay. Sir, please. It's okay for the slide. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. Okay. You can start. Uh, 
please. Okay, just in one minute. Okay. Okay, I will start. Uh -huh. So, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be with you at the scientific event, which I'm participating in uh, for the first time, and I think it won't be the last. I would like uh, to greet uh, uh, all the scientific community present with us, and also my colleagues with whom we are running this session. On this occasion, I would like to present part of results of my doctoral thesis and uh, under the title Small Pelagic Fishery Statistics on the Central Region, uh, Algerian Coast, uh, combined with satellite abiotic data and me meteorological data. Um, so, firstly, why were we interested in small pelagics? In one uh, hand, we, sorry, uh, we couldn't yeah. see your presentation. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. And now? No. Oh. Coming. Okay, okay. So, um, so firstly, why were we interested in small pelagics? In uh, one hand, small, so, yeah. Sorry, sorry again, uh, Lamia, there yeah. is no present presentation. Oh. Now, sir? No. Oh. Before you say uh, just a minute, you have uh, uh, you have done. Uh, and we see uh, first the uh, your presentation, and then yeah. uh, just we we see your uh, name right now. Ah, okay. So there is a no, problem. No problem. I can't understand this. Um... You you can see uh, the camera microphone and the file uh, file share uh, yeah. buttons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello, Hussein. Is is Bakari is here? No. Uh, Bak uh, Bakari not, not here. Uh, Lamia is uh, inshallah will uh, make a presentation, but uh, she has uh, some problem. Yeah, OK, I see. OK. Lamia, would you like to uh, uh, uh, have a time uh, with another uh, speaker? <coughs> uh, uh, are there any uh, um, people, uh, Adel? Kashimi Abdurrahman Buda Bilal Bensari for a uh, first presentation. Yes, I am here. Who are you, please? Adel Hashimi. I, OK, OK. Ad I am uh, here. Adel, uh, OK, please uh, start your presentation. Uh, actually, you are first. 
Okay. We are okay. waiting for nothing. Please uh, uh, <coughs> share your presentation, please. <clears throat> okay. You can start. Thank you. Adel, uh, there is no voice. Yes, yes, I know. I know, you know. Uh, why are I you are waiting? Some, I have just some problem with the computer. Huh. Can I help you? Uh, for Would you like to enlarge the presentation or? Yes. Uh, You can. Okay, uh, it's nice. We can see your uh, first page of presentation. Can we start, please? Dear Professor Gürüler, I have a suggestion. Okay. okay. Uh, the speakers can present their uh, papers without full secret. Without? Without full secret. Uh, okay. The, the speakers uh, can present their presentations Without full secret. Uh, do, do you understand, uh, dear guests? Because we, we can see uh, the presentations in uh, without full uh, secret. And the speakers can present their presentations without full screen. And uh, next okay. slide, previous okay. slide. We are, we are, we can understand, right?
But the problem, uh, Dr. Emre, uh, there is no voice. Hocam sanırım e, video kaydı şeklinde mi yapmışlar slide'ı? E, o şekilde yanlış mı anladım bilmiyorum. E, bir, bir tanesi öyle de e, sunucuları değiştiriyoruz. Herhalde hepsini e, hocam, hoca kayda mı almış acaba? Sanırım öyle bir sıkıntı var. Kayıt olduğu için e, duyamıyoruz. Gibi Sesi anladım. paylaşamazlar mı? İşte slide'da görmüşler sanırım. So hello everyone. Today I am going to present to you our okay. study entitled Modeling the Risk of Introducing Non-Native Species Through Ship Hull Biofouling by Percent Cover Calculation. Mm -hmm. So we will start with an overview of the problematic of biofouling. Then we will move on the methodology of the work. Then we will, as you see, the source of data acquisition, and we will end with the presentation of the results and a conclusion. The problem of invasive species carried by ships has intensified in recent decades as a result of increased trade and traffic volumes, and as maritime trade volumes continue to increase, the problem may not have been not yet reached. The, the effect is many parts of the world have been devastating. Quantitative data show that the rate of bioinvasion continues to rise at an alarming rate and new areas are being invaded all the time. As you can see in the picture, these are images of fouling assemblage sampled at the port of Algiers by our team where we found the presence of several non-native species. It is therefore essential to combat this bioinvasion and adopt effective strategies to eradicate this organism before they can reach the receiving environment and before they settle. This is only possible if new introduction can be anticipated before they occur. So the first step in any prevention study is to estimate the potential flow and intensity of transfer of no native species. This study proposed an alternative approach to estimate the potential of transfer of non-native species, the flow between the different ecoregion, the propagule pressure, and the area that constitute a major risk in terms of introduction and invasion of aquatic orga organisms, arriving at the port of Arzu by estimating the risk of invasion associated with each voyage voyages of vessel to the port of Arzu. For the methodology, we use data on the change in fouling coverage to generate a starting model that estimates the percentage of fouling coverage as a function of visual hole immersion over time at the stationary state of the vessel in each port of origin, like you can see in the figure one. We then integrated into this model an exponential decay function that gives the probability of survival of the fouling as a function of the speed of the vessel, as well as a third parameter explaining the efficiency of the vessel's anti-fouling system. And the last factor, PR, relating to the different anti-fouling strategies used in the port of origin to model the probability of introduction of the fouling from port E to port G. Second, the probability that the non-native species it was estimated according to the geographical distance of each port of origin from the port of Arzu. The third parameter of the bioinvasion model was calculated by environmental similarity using the Mahalanobis metric, then transformed into the probability of establishment of the fouling by the inverse of T squared. Finally, the risk of invasion of each port was estimated by combining the three probabilities 
PEG Introduction and PEG Alien and PEG Establishment. After estimating the risk of introduction and invasion of fouling species through the hull of the vessel, in the case of no treatment of the vessel in the port of origin, we produced invasion risk maps by port and by ecoregion using ARC map GIS. In addition, we modeled the scenario of biofouling treatment in this port and the impact of change in environmental parameters on the risk reduction rate in the port of Arzu. The weighted surface of ships is the main cause of the introduction of fouling, providing the necessary substrate for the adhesion of marine organisms. So we calculate this parameter for inclusion in the final model. To summarize, the input parameters of the bioinvasion model were the latitude of the port of origin, the duration of stay in each donor port, the anti-fouling strategies used in the donor port, and the efficiency of the anti-fouling system, the average speed of the crossing, the geographical distance from the port of Arzu, the environmental similarity between the donor ports and the port of Arzu. For the data source, we incorporated into the bioinvasion model data on maritime traffic in the port of Arzu, environmental data, and data on maritime ecoregion. Then we validated these results using a database of records of introduction of an ES in the Mediterranean. The data for the validation have been filtered to include only species suspected to be introduced by ship's holes. We transformed the introduction event of non navy species in 30 Mediterranean countries into the observed probability of introduction by dividing the number of introduced falling species in each country per the total number of introduced, introduced fouling species. We then compared this introduction event with the estimate of the PEG introduction model. The idea <coughs> is to find a correlation between the introduction events observed in this country and the risk of an ES introduction predicted by, by the model from this country. We used then the shipping movement data to apply the bio invasion model. This data were obtained from the ARZU for authorities for the years 2016. This database was supplemented via the vessel tracker network. We then assisted the environmental layers from bio oracle. A total of nine variables were selected to implement the PEG establishment model. Mean sea temperature, pH, mean current velocity, mean dissolved oxygen, mean salinity, minimum sea temperature, mean chlorophyll, and mean nitrate. We used data on percent change in biofouling coverage from five studies that tracked the accumulation of fouling from temperate and tropical coastal sit over time in different parts of the world. Eight global biogeographic regions in Australia, Brazil, Japan, Chile, England, Sweden, Portugal, and Italy. Three missile farms in Port Phillip Bay in Australia and two coastal ecoregions of the United States coast. The Salt Holman Marina in the Katigat Sea and the Marina of Quenta do Lordi in the Madeira Archipelago in the Atlantic Ocean. So, for the risk assessment method, in this section, we describe the construction of the, prob the probabilistic model of bioinvasion at the port of Arzu in the Western Mediterranean and the method of its evaluation. Successful bioinvasion depends on several factors and may be estimated from first the probability that a species succeed in being introduced by a vector beyond its natural range, and two the, probab the probability that that this non-native species in ended non-native into the receiving environment, and three the probability that that this species establish itself in the the receiving ecosystem. So we use the fouling accumulation data to estimate the percentage of fouling coverage on vessel and translate this percentage into the, the probability of introduction. 
We then estimate the probability of species is alien, PEG alien by biogeographic dissimilarity. And finally, the calculation of the probability of establishment using the environmental data, PEG establishment. Assuming statistical independence among the three probabilities, the invasion probability for O3 between 4E and 4G is calculated as it's the combination of the three probabilities, PEG alien and PEG introduction and PEG establishment. Probability of, estab of establishment, it was calculated on the basis of environmental similarity between the donor ports and the port of Arzio using the Mahananobis distance in nine dimensional ecological space. This metric is consistent with the ecological niche theory, which suggests the existence of optimal environmental condition for a species in addition to maxima and minima, outside of which the species cannot exist. But it also explains better than other metrics, as like Euclidean distance, the gradual change in environmental condition by the variance covariance matrix to which falling is subject throughout the ship's passage. The formula is given by the, the following equation number five. The transformation, <coughs> the transformation of this of this distance by was carried out by the inverse of T squared. See the equation number six and seven. The final invasion probability between donor ports E and port of Arzu for all voyages from E to G was calculated by aggregating all invasion probabilities calculated individually for each of the voyages from the port of origin to the port of Arzu. This aggregation can be applied to the ship's type ecoregion as well. The equation number eight and the equ equation number nine. For the result and discussion, we will start by, present, by pre presenting the environmental simari, similarity and the probability of establishment by ecoregion. The port of Arzu is part of the Alboran Sea ecoregion, Med 36, the Mediterranean Sea province and the North Atlantic temperate, temperate biogeographic realm. The coastal ecoregion that represents a high risk of establishment of no native species are distributed primarily in the Mediterranean Basin and the ecoregion of the Lusitanian Biogeographical Province. For the Mediterranean Basin, the ecoregion Med 13 to the Med 36 were at a very high risk, represented respectively by the IEGNC ecoregion with a maximum establishment of probability of 0 0.97, the Western Mediterranean ecoregion the Levante Sea, the Adriatic Sea, and the Ionian Sea, ecoregion from Italy and the island of Malta. The biota of this area is very similar to the composition of the Western Mediterranean, leading to the observed environmental similarity. So the following communities of Sicil affinity transiting through this region will adapt easily if they survive to the ship's drive. All the more so since most commercial ships navigate close to the coast where environmental change are less significant, which could increase the, change, the chance of survival of this non-native species, thus enabling them to invite the receiving environment. Like the case of the Comasius Crustacean Ecomasar Sea, which was reported by Grimacy All in 2018, in the port of Arzu and by Corbera and Galil, in 2016 in the Levantine Sea. This cryptogenic species could be native to the Asian Sea. The Levantine Sea in, <coughs> is an important transitory for the introduction of the Lysipian species via the Suez Canal. For the ecoregion of the Lusitanian Biogeographical Province, the Canary Azur Madeira ecoregion LL. 29 has high environmental similarity with the Alboron Sea ecoregion, with an average distance of Mahanalobis about 
4.47 and average settlement probability of 0.91. Similarly, the two coastal ecoregion, Saharan Upwelling and the South European Atlantic Shelf, both have a mean Mahanalobis distance of 9.77 and 7.88 respectively and a mean statement probability of 0.66 and 0.94 respectively. Coastal shipping routes from this area favor the survival of species and produced from this ecoregion and environmental condition will be favor favorable for most taxa that could, that could be co become invasive. This result is consistent with the observation of Bansari et al at the port of Arzio concerning the species Apsodopsis <coughs> adami, a non-native and, and a recorded species on, on the Mediterranean originating from the, the eastern of Portugal. For the risk of invasion by ports of provenance, the Mediterranean ports, namely the ports of Naples, Marsaclox, Algix, Algis, Pos, Marmara, and the port of Book in France present a probability of alliance that is more or less low, given their distance from the port of Arzio. As you like, as, as you see in the figure three. However, the high number of ships coming fr from these ports, in addition to the great environmental similarity with the Western Mediterranean, and also taking into account the length of stay of ships in this port and the low speed of ships crossing from this area have resulted in a very high probability of invasion. And consequently, a very high risk of invasion has been prized. Several Mediterranean ports are hips such as Marsaclock in Malta, Valencia in Spain, and Piraeus in Greece. These hopes receive a considerable number of ships, mainly from Asia, so the propagule the pressure is consequently high. Additionally, the Mediterranean exhibit high environmental similarity with some Asian Sea. The probability of species introduction is increased. Thus, an introduction occurring around these hopes will inevitably affect the port of Arzio through the process of secondary introduction. This is a widespread phenomenon along the Algerian coast. For the risk of invasion by ecoregion, from the 30, from the 30 donor ecoregion, six are at very high risk of whole biofouling invasion. Ten at high risk and nine at moderate risk and five at low risk. In that the northern and central Red Sea ecoregion is classified as a very high risk area with an invasion probability of 0 0.020 based on only 50 trips. The average speed of vessel coming from this area is 9.93 knots and the average duration of stay of vessel is 2.62 days, a probability of survival of 0.14 was rented to the fouling transported from this zone and a probability of alien of 0.46. The accumulation of fouling is the port in, the, in this port of this ecoregion is moderate due to the short stay of the ships but the reduced speed and the coastal navigation of the ships coming from this the Red Sea and the great environmental similarity with the Alboron Sea have increased the probability of survival and therefore the probability of invasion is increased. Our prediction for this bioregion are consistent with the several study with several study that have dealt with biological, biological invasion through Glycyption immigration. For example, Galaxora rigosa, a species of rhodophyte alga of Indo-Pacific origin, established in the Mediterranean, will probably be introduced by the whole of ships from the Red Sea, which is connected with the Asian Sea. 
the Mediterranean Sea bioregion, mid 34 to and mid 31, and the mid 35, respectively, respectively, respectively, Ionian Sea, Aegean Sea, and the Western Mediterranean have a very high probability of invasion. Uh, for the risk invasion by ship steep. Yes. Dr. Dr. Adam, uh, please, yes. uh, may you please uh, speed up? Uh, and yes. Uh, thank you. So for the risk invasion by ships type, the analysis of invasion risk by vessel types show that the three ships category, LPG tanker, oil chemical tanker, and LNG tankers present the, high, the highest risk of invasion through biofouling, with invasion probability about 0.08 and 0.03, respectively. The figure 5 shows that the risk of invasion is proportional to the weighted area of the vessel. The larger <coughs> the larger the weighted area of a vessel, the greater the risk of invasion through biofouling of the hull. These three categories of vessels accumulated the largest weighted area compared to the other categories of vessel. For the risk invasion by anti-fouling strategies, the treatment of biofouling in each port of origin can influence the likelihood of introduction. By changing the PR coefficient, several scenarios can be modeled. So by compiling with the standard pro proposed by the EMO, <coughs> we tested the effect we tested the effect of using different anti-fooling strategies on reducing the, pro the probability of introduction. For the effect of environmental variable on the risk invasion, species due to the evolutionary history and common characteristic are separated by biogeographic barriers. These barriers are essentially governed by abiotic parameters such as temperature and salinity. The alteration of these parameters allows species to either expand or shrink their natural range. Based on this fundamental assumption of species distribution, we test the survival capacity of the fouling introduced by the hulls of ships in the Alboron Sea <coughs> using 3550 prediction. The Mahanalupis distance calculated for the three environmental parameters will be expressed as the probability of establishment of the biota to analysis the effect of its change on the probability of invasion. We identify a very large increase in the probability of invasion at the port of Arzu for the year 2015. This increase is proportional to the increase in environmental parameters. The increase in the probability of establishment accelerate the phenomenon of biota homogenization, homogenization. So the figure seven shows an increase in the risk of invasion of ecoregion for the same ship shipping effort in the in, in the port of Arzu. For conclusion, biofouling of ships holds is an important source of non-native species spreading into the new environment. A greater mechanistic and quantitative understanding of this risk of invasion are desperately needed. We have used an innovative approach to estimate the risk of this vector in the port of Arzu as a case study location. We show that for a total of 7,038 voyages, the risk of invasion is considerable. The results presented in this paper can be used by international governmental authorities such as the International Maritime Organization and by local authorities of EMO members' country. In particular, our results are useful for Algerian authorities to establish specific laws and regulation on large tonnage vessels such as LNG and NPG tanker and oil chemical tanker in order to minimize the transfer of non-native species around the world. This modeling approach developed, developed from experimental data from several global studies, studies can be applied to ports around the world by adjusting certain parameters 
and aiding other factors now to influence fouling accumulation. Overall, the study has contributed to the understanding of the impact of ship-borne fouling is consistent with work on no native species on the Mediterranean and provide a framework for similar work in other regions around the world. And thank you. Uh, we also thank you very much uh, for your uh, comprehensive and nice uh, presentation, but uh, the time is very not large. Uh, are there any questions, uh, fast questions? No. Uh, uh, with your uh, prevents, uh, I, I, permission, I would like to move on to another presentation. Uh, uh, Lamia, can we uh, try? Oh, yes, sir. Sorry for the problem. Um, I will try to present my work and I think uh, we will leave the presentation of Mr. Bashari at the end. I will try to pass it again, mm -hmm. if it's possible. Okay, I will try just now. Please, sir, it's okay, you know? Right, right. Uh, you can start, please. Uh, you have uh, 10 minutes for presentation. Uh, okay, please. thank yes. you. Thank you, mm -hmm. sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I will start. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be with you at the scientific event, which I'm participating in for the first time, and I think it won't be the last. I would like to greet all the scientific community present with us, and also my my uh, my colleagues with whom we are running this session. In this occasion, I would like to present a part of the results of my doctoral thesis under the title Small Pelagic Fishery Statistics on the Central Algerian Coast, combined with satellite abiotic data and meteorological data. So, um, firstly, why were we interested in small pelagics? In one hand, small pelagics are the most consumed fish in the world, especially in the Mediterranean Basin and Algeria. And in another hand, small pelagics are the second link in the food chain after plankton <laughs> controlling then uh, the higher trophic levels. Given the socioeconomic interest of small pelagics, there is a need for scientific research to better exploit this biological resource. It's in this context that the question arises as to how do small pelagic fish behave under the influence of others? This methodology consists of the combination of three main databases. Firstly, we collected daily small pelagic fishing statistics for 2060 and 2070 in the southern Algerian coast. These data were then uh, classified by mouth, expressed in tones. Then, to explain the known productive fishing days, where we uh, noted zero fishing, we established a daily weather database for 2060 and 2070 also, in order to determine the causes of no fishing and no trips because fishing in Algeria depends strongly on the weather. Finally, we extracted abiotic data from the MODI satellite, namely sea surface temperature, SST, and chlorophyll, marine chlorophyll, uh, CHLA. So, chlorophyll A, in order to try to understand the abiotic productivity of small pelagics. 
The three databases were then combined by a correlative study. We applied this method in the central coast of Algeria because of the socioeconomic importance of the region and the accessibility of the fishing data. It should be noted that this method is applicable in all fisheries areas. So, in order to apply this method, we first need to know the abiotic variations in um, the study area. For this purpose, satellite images were used to allow us to extract sea surface temperature and chlorophyll values and to define their distribution between the three bays studied. Here presented the satellite images per mode used to extract chlorophyll A concentrations, uh, calculating the monthly mean for each mode. And here are the satellite images by mode used to extract the sea surface temperature values. The figures presented cool by the entire Algerian coast, but we have limited ourselves, ourselves to the area presented above, namely the central coast. We found that the two parameters evolve inversely and they show a strong negative correlation. We mentioned here that the correlation was met from the monthly results. That is when the temperature increases in summer, for example, the chlorophyll concentration decreases, and when the temperature decreases in winter, the chlorophyll concentration increases. This inverse relationship between sea surface temperature and chlorophyll can be seen in the graphs presented here for each bay. So, in general, both parameters follow seasonal variations throughout the year. The three sea surface temperature curves are practically similar and show no significant variation for the three base overall months of the year. On the other hand, there is an increase in temperature and chlorophyll gradient from west to east. This gradient is caused by the passage of cold Atlantic waters first to the west and then advancing eastwards and mixing with warm Mediterranean waters. Now, we are going to see the fishery production of small pelagic in 2060 and 2070 in all three zones combined. We have chosen six uh, different space species, round sardinella, boogie, anchovy, horse mackerel, sardine and mackerel. Firstly, we note a clear difference between the total production balance sheet for 2000. 60, um, we have 3,360 tons, and in uh, 2070, uh, 5,573 tons. So um, the year 2000, 2060 was less productive than 2070. This increase in small pelagic production in 2070 is due to the increase in sardine boats according to the direction of fisheries with more than 165%. We note that bogey anchovies and horse mackerel are poorly fished throughout the year. We will therefore only look and focus at round sardinella, sardine and horse mackerel. Firstly, for round sardinella, it represents the species with the highest fishing product in 2070. There are two peaks, the first one in the spring between March and June, with a maximum in May, and the second in the autumn between September and December, with a maximum in November. Lava use in the mining months are recorded, especially in summer, um, especially in summer in July. In 2070, maximum production is reached due, during July. There is moderate production during February, May and June and low production for the remaining months. Then for sardine, it's the most cost species in 2060, with a maximum recorded between July and September, peaking in August. Um, it's weekly present during the rest of the year, especially between December and April. And, and then in 2070, it has 
production from January to May and is non-existent during June and July. The exception is met during September to November with a spike uh, in October for a fishing product of 541 tons. And uh, for the last one, horse mackerel. This uh, species, species is present throughout the year, but in low production. The maximum was noted in April and June. Low values were recorded between January, March and July. The maximum reached in uh, 2017 is between April and June with a peak in May. Fishing statistics. The most important results are the following. Sardin is very related to sea uh, temperature with a correlation coefficient equal 0 0.9 and moderately related to growth of A with a correlation uh, coefficient equal uh, 0 0.44. While horse mackerel is weakly related to sea surface temperature and strongly related to chlorophyll with a correlation coefficient equal 0.57. Boogie is weakly related with sea surface temperature and chlorophyll A with um, coefficient, correlation coefficient uh, equal 0.21. Round sardinella is negatively created with sea surface temperature and weakly created with chlorophyll A with a correlation coefficient equal 0 0.20. Um, all the species are seasonal except round sardinella which is positively created with chlorophyll A and negatively created with sea surface temperature. So when chlorophyll A increases and SST decreases, this phenomenon is present in the winter season uh, or is rated to upwelling. To conclude, correlation coefficients indicate that chlorophyll A and sea surface temperature can be used as parameters for modeling the Algerian fishery. It's clear that it's not possible to have exact temporal and special fishing statistics. Nevertheless, our study focuses on a few small pelagic species in a limited geographical framework, thus contributing to the understanding uh, of the behavior of the most consumed species in Algeria and making it a model applicable to other species. It would be interesting to extend the study of fisheries cultures over long periods and combine them with variations in surface temperature chlorophyll A. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Lamia. <coughs> uh, this is very a clear presentation. Thank you. Uh, are, there, are there any questions to uh, presenter Lamia? Uh, thank you again. Uh, I would like to uh, um, <clears throat> move on uh, mm -hmm. another presentation. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, are there any here uh, Kerime Rameshi or Fuzia Humuya for uh, presentation number 126 <coughs> Geo uh, Chemical Analysis? And anyone here from the presentation Geo Chemical Analysis? No. Uh, the last uh, one uh, from the uh, Saida Saadi Fatih Kerim Amgar. Yes, Are I'm the, here. Uh, I'm here. Ha, okay, okay. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, thank you. The presentation development on a uh, land cover, right? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. I will uh, share my screen. Uh -huh, please look. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. You can you can start, please. Yes. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. 
I would like, first of all, to thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me here today. Let me introduce myself. I am Miss Saida Sadi from Mohamed Bougra University of Boumerdes, Algeria. As you can see on the screen, our topic today is development of a land cover mapping method for an Algerian step region, Dufa region, using multispectral remote sensing. On this presentation, we would like to focus, point one, on the value of digital techniques using multi-temporal satellite imagery and GIS techniques for understanding land cover land use data. Point two, on a data processing workflow for Landsat 8 images. And point three, on land cover classification technique. In, those, in uh, all the steps of the world, we have problem. In all the steps of the world, we speak of degradation of ranglands. It's commonly accepted that the desertification phenomenon leads to a modification of ecosystem and landscapes. This phenomenon affects arid, semi-arid, and dry sub-humid areas. It is process that induces changes and variation in vegetation cover and element of the soil surface under the combined action of human activities and climatic variabilities. The arid and the semi-arid areas of the Algerian state are not the exception. In recent decades, we are witnessing a rapid transformation of the, of the landscapes due mainly of the phenomenon of desertification. This photo shows the level of degradation of ecosystem in the region of Jelfa. Since the 1990 global regional greatly developed thanks to advance in earth observation and the monitor methods including remote sensing GIS technique. This realization of land use and land cover map represents an important in the analysis of for land use mapping and development. Yes, study. The area study is located in the center part of the high steppe plain of northern Algeria, 300 kilometers south of Algiers. The region is characterized by great diversity of land use distributed mainly between forest formation, soil forest formations, Forest formation. Given the vulnerability of physical environment, climate, soil, and vegetation cover by the irrational use of these resources by men, maintain a stable state in terms of occupation over will result in there the disappearance of these formations by others. For this reason, it is important to create an accurate set of use planning and development. Generally, by file survey or from photo photo uh, or to photo interpretation but this method are time consuming and very very expensive 
uses satellite remote sensing data is practical option to identify and map the land cover categories. GIS tools were used to create to geo database and integrated data extracted from satellite images with classes. The data that appears are overlaid, analyzed, and assisted with GIS software. The data used in the study, the data used in the study are presented in table one. The data used in the GPS data, land cover, land use map of Definition of of different indices and very high resolution images. The study area is covered by two suns from Landsat 8 only. The from US Geological Survey website. The sun the suns cover path. 96036 and 195036 have special resolution of 30 meters. I could free and are referenced to WGS 84 zone 31. The two sons correspond to the same period in order to reduce the undesirable, undesirable effect of variation in sun angle and atmospheric condition. The data were collected during the peak season of vegetation project and production April-May. Methodology on experimental work. The land cover classification were obtained by unsupervised classification with ISO data algorithm and supported by the PCA image and seven potential indices grouped in three categories based on reflectance properties and the spectral response of the area covered by vegetation, water, built up, built up area, Bar soil, rocky soil, and regland, and regland area. Figure one shows the data processing flow. The processing of the images took place in several stages, which are step one, radiometric and atmospheric correction. The digital numbers values were converted into the terrain radiance using the parameter from Landsat metadata file. The atmospheric correction op operation, the model flash was used in EMVI 5.3 uh, software with MLS atmosphere model in order to enhance the image information by transforming the radiance at sensor into surface reflectance values rescaled between zero and one. Doctor, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Saida, uh, can you take your screen out of full screen, please? Uh, take take a, a f file again. Yes. <clears throat> it's okay. No, not yet. Uh, uh, the, the, it's okay. The prob the, no, the problem was uh, there is no uh, your uh, your page. Uh, we we couldn't see your page. Just we see your uh, first uh, page. Can you try to uh, make a presentation uh, with, with uh, serving your file? I will try, I will try. Mm -hmm. Please. Okay, nice. Go ahead, please. 
It's okay. Uh, before, before, okay. Uh, now uh, we can just your name. Uh, tr try again, please. It's okay. Coming. We are waiting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's okay now. Yes. No. It's okay. Very well. Step one: image preprocessing, radiometric, and atmospheric correction. The digital number values were converted into the ten radians using the parameter from Landsat metadata file. For atmospheric correction operation, the model flash was used in EMV 5.3 software with MLS atmosphere model in order to enhance the image information by transforming the radiance at sensor into surface reflectance values. This is called between one, between zero and one. The photo A represents original image before atmospheric correction. Photo B represents an atmospherically corrected data, data with RGB 432. Uh, step, uh, step two, mosaic and subset image. Step three, color composition with optimum index factor with RGB 7. Five one. This combination allows us an, uh, an optimal visualization of study area. Step four, merging high resolution added the band eight to increase the spatial resolution to 50 meters. Step five, we have three steps, image transformation into PCA. Step two, calculate uh, seven indices grouped into three categories, namely category one consists two indices developed to study vegetation properties and their distribution. We have NDVI and SAVI. Category two consists of indices developed to study barren soil, built up area, and all developed infrastructure. We have BSI, UI, and NDBI. Category three consists of indices developed to study water resource distribution. We have MNDBI and NDBI. Step three, line stacking with three band of PCA, PC1, PC2, and PC3, plus seven bands of seven indices already calculated. Step six, unsupervised classification with ISO data algorithm. Applied on the layer staking image combined in order in order to better separate objects as well as decrease confusion with a number <coughs> of classes equal to 20. Seven uh, step seven. We are two steps. Step one: class uh, identif classes identification and reclassification using synchronization, overlapping, and superposition of three information coming from three resources. Using very high resolution images, PCA image, and GPS data, and land use land cover map of 2004 identified the 20 classes by their real names. Step two, merging of classes to avoid redundancy and identification of seven classes, which are presentation, bar soil, rocky soil, built up area, and sandy formation. For result, for PCA, color composite, 
of the first three PCA, PC1, PC3, and PC2 for Landsat data has enabled us to as, as, uh, easily distinguish between vegetation in green, salty wheatland in blue, and sandy formations in yellow color. A result of indices for NDVI and SAVI. The highest value indicate area with red color, while the, uh, the low values with green color indicate the absence of vegetation or very, very low vegetation cover case of uh, regland. Category two for NDPI, BSI, and UI, the highest values with red color or orange color indicate bar soil and rocky soil, while the low values with green color indicate water bodies and vegetation. Category three. For NDVI and MNDVI, the highest value indicate water bodies with red color, while the low values with green color indicate bar soil, rocky soil, and uh, vegetation. After classification with 20 classes, it was noted that the similarities between the spectral signature caused by poor separation with the land use classes, the same color with, uh, was assigned to, to the, the two different classes. This include building and water bodies, bar soil and built area, and bar soil and unit with low vegetation cover. It means low confusion, uh, it means low separation or confusion between classes. For validation and confirmation, other information resource we were used in with land use land cover map with 20 classes by overlapping uh, superposition and synchronization in I, uh, in ArcGIS software of PCA image, very high resolution image. GPS data and land use land cover map of 2010. After, after uh, the reclassification and fusion between the classes, we could identify seven classes, which are forest in green color, agriculture in red color, rangland in the beige color, wheatland in the blue color, sand deformation in yellow color, bar soil and rocky soil in uh, brown color, and uh, building is black color. In order to evaluate this classification, the overall accuracy and the kappa coefficients is calculated for that we have overall accuracy equal to 91% and kappa coefficients is uh, 0 0.90. The overall accuracy shows the good relationship between the number of pixels correctly classified and the total number of pixels. The kappa coefficient estimates the agreement between map and reality and it is ranging from 0 to 1. Whereas zero represent total disagreement and one total agreement. The result of the spatial distribution of land unit shows 66% of Rangland, 11% for bisol rocky soil, 10% for forest vegetation, 8% for agriculture. 2% for sand deformation, also 2% for salty wetland, and 1% for built up area. For conclusion, 
th this presentation proposes an alternative methodology to obtain a highly accurate land cover model for a complex landscape by integrating Landsat 8 satellite image with auxiliary data, PCA image, and this is very high resolution images, uh, GPS data, and land cover land use map of, 20, of 2010. Auxiliary data were used to correct errors and to discriminate between categories that were difficult to classify. The data from the classification were integrated into the GIS software, ArcGIS, to generate the final land cover map. The result allowed to have a synoptic vision of land use and land cover landscapes. The higher accuracy of the, the, of the final land cover data set shows the usefulness of this method. The result obtained encourage us to apply this method on a later date in order to study the dynamics of the Algerian steps in time and space in order to analyze and identify the areas uh, and the rate of change and the trajectory of change of the land cover. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Saida. Uh, Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, uh, thank you all. Uh, Thank you. Pre presentation pre uh, presents and uh, who are Adel, Lamia, and Saida. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank we you. would we okay. We would like to uh, uh, send our greetings to Algeria, uh, all Algerian uh, people. We are uh, we are uh, brothers and sisters, and also we would like to send our uh, greetings to Nur, Nur al Bashari. Uh, he is our uh, mo uh, mo most uh, gre great uh, uh, friends. Uh, Sorry, but uh, there may uh, such uh, problems in remote uh, presentations. I know. Uh, yeah. We look forward to meeting you face to face at future conferences. Uh, Thank you, sir. Sir, please. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sir, please. Okay, I, I I am hearing, I, I am listening, Lamia. Okay, uh, can I try to present the work of Professor Bashari again? Okay, uh, you can try. Uh, thank you, I will try right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Uh, sir, please. Uh, I'm going to launch. You tell me, please, if it's OK. It's OK. Uh, you can start if you're ready. OK, I'll try. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can uh, see the presentation. But no ra right now. Sir, it's OK for the voice. Voice, uh, there is a uh, we can uh, hear your voice. Your voice, ah, okay. So, you, you can't uh, see the voice of Mr. Bash uh, Bashari, no, no, oh, okay. The same problem. There's no voice. No voice. OK, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the problem. I can't fix it. I don't understand this. I'm sorry, yes. sir. Me too. <laughs> OK, I'm sorry for Mr. Bashari too. <laughs> Uh, another solution maybe at the uh, at this uh, presentation uh, for the uh, later uh, sessions with uh, yeah why not with why not uh, okay uh, I will give uh, uh, this problem uh, I will give uh, um, serve the problem the uh, uh, chairman and uh, technicians uh, then. Uh, they will uh, make a uh, email or a WhatsApp uh, message with you. OK, no problem. Thank you very much. Oh, Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. sir. Thank, uh, thank you all. Uh, uh, please send you very our much, uh, greetings you very uh, to all just, uh, uh, uh, Algerian people. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, Greetings to Turkey too. Thanks, ah, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, close the uh, all uh, session. Uh, thank you very much for the guests and presenters. Uh, Thanks for you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Thank you, salam.